There's an assault coming, we need to go now. Now, now, now! Stop. What are you doing? I gotta go back. There are 28,000 people there. No, no, we can't no, no. abandon them. You're brilliant, and brave, and fuck, you've got an amazing nose for the story. But you don't have a military brain, all right? Hey, Let hey, me go. hey, we will fucking die if we go back, okay? We will I gotta go back. Die. You go. No. Save no. me a seat at the bar. Yeah, which bar? Come on. Where? Marie! Fuck! Come on, come here. How did you both first come to, to this, and what made you want to play these, these real-life characters? I think it's a combination of, of, of this, of Marie being a, a, a woman who I greatly admired and I felt would be a story that other people, if they didn't know her already, would find, would find inspiring, you know, precisely because, you know, there's a trope of the fearless war reporter and here is someone who is not fearless, who has tremendous fear, but also tremendous belief and, and, and goes through that fear um, in the name of the cause she believes in. I feel like a big part of doing this film is shedding further light on, on the magnitude of what these people put themselves through to tell the truth of what's happening in these war-torn places. I mean, that, uh, you know, sometimes I think uh, our job is, you know, we've definitely both done films like this where it's just sort of entertainment and, and it provides a certain service and, um, and then sometimes it seems a little bit deeper than that and, and you feel that, um, by opening people's eyes to a certain cause or a certain movement can um, can be a very a, a very good thing. Every war correspondent has a, a risk threshold beyond which they they're not prepared to go. And I think you know plenty of people when the the, the story was in Homs, many many reporters were in um, Beirut, and most of them said you know that is beyond our fear, our, our, our risk threshold. And Marie said, but it's what we do, and. Um, this was actually after they'd already been in Homs. She'd filed one story for the Sunday Times. They knew that the final assault, there was a big military push from Assad's army, um, and it was coming imminently. And they had the intelligence that it was coming tomorrow. They headed back down this four-kilometer storm drain, which is how they'd got into the besieged city in the first place. And that was when Marie was, you know, however many hundred meters down and said, I, I, I can't do it. We cannot, we cannot leave those people and let this go unreported. And I need to get more footage. And by that time, she probably had lost her judgment. I mean, I think that, that, that is the effect of... And, and talk about working with Matthew Heinemann, you mentioned there, I mean, he's, a, he's known as a documentary director, mm -hmm. and particularly in light of what's going on in the world at the moment, that probably suited this project. Yeah, I think so. I think his, his main focus, like most documentary makers, is to tell the truth, and, and that's a, you know, that often isn't the case in film, <laughs> but I think it's a really refreshing um, element to bring into narrative film. Um, so for this, particularly when you're dealing with something like this, where, you know, you know, since 2012, when Marie was killed, uh, half a million civilians have, have died in Syria. It's not getting any better. We're sort of still a bit closed off to it. So um, having someone who wants to unearth the actual truth of that rather than sort of glamorize it or, or make it some sort of Hollywood version of what's going on there and about heroes and stuff, but really get in there and tell the truth of what's happening. Uh, he was perfect.